Well, everybody, welcome back to my workshop. I've been up since very early this morning working on my Zenith 750 Super Duty build. And I thought that since this is the very beginning of the entire build series, I would go over just some basic information about these videos that might help you kind of understand what the whole thing is about. So the first thing I wanted to mention is each video is going to have a title, but after that title, it's going to have an episode number. So I've renamed the previous video I made of the arrival of the crate is episode one. This video you're watching right now will be episode two. And then everyone going forward about the, with the Super Duty will have an episode number. Now I'll have other like flying videos in my Zenith Cruiser, but those won't be episode numbers. That way I think it'll be more organized for you guys. So you're always gonna be able to know that it's or, episode one, two, three, four. You'll always know what order all these build videos will be in. And then the second thing I wanted to mention is just overview of why I am making these videos. There's a lot of reasons I make these videos, but the main reason is because I just truly want to give back. I want to inspire you and I want to motivate you if you have been thinking about building an airplane. This is something that anybody can do. I've told you guys a number of times, I really feel that anybody can build an airplane as long as you're patient and you're willing to learn. You don't have to know everything about aircraft construction to get started. Watch my previous videos. There's a lot of resources out there for you uh, to help you along the way. And I just wanna use these videos to show you how Zenith Super Duty is built. And if you're building an airplane at the same time, then it's perfect, we'll build them together. Now I've had about four or five people ask me if these videos are going to be available on a DVD for sale. The answer is no. I don't have the equipment, the time, or the desire to do that, and I don't feel like there's any need to do that. These videos are all going to be on YouTube completely free for you, um, so no, won't be available on DVDs. All right, so how do you guys ask me questions? And the reason I'm including this in this video is because I get so many emails from people asking questions, which isn't a problem. I usually try to answer those emails, but the problem comes in when somebody asks me a question and then the next day, somebody emails me again with the exact same question. I have to type the whole answer all over again. The other thing is, I've started to get a number of emails with people asking me, hey, I just have a few quick questions. If you could just give me a quick call. Guys, I'd love to, but I can't. I have a full-time job and a bunch of little businesses. I just don't have the time to call everybody on the phone. So the one place I'd really like for you guys to post your questions is in the comment sections below the videos. That way it's all organized in one space. Anybody else that has a similar question can look through the comment sections and see my answers. All right, with that basic info out of the way, let's get started building. All right, now in order to get started building the horizontal stabilizer, the first step is to get all of the parts together. You can see that on the labels, all of the horizontal stabilizer parts are marked with stab for stabilizer. And that's how we know that that part goes to the horizontal stabilizer. Another good way to see if you have all the parts is to look through the plans. Now for the horizontal stabilizer, there's a couple pages. So you can flip through the pages and just make sure you have all of those parts together. You can organize them and lay them all out on your table. And then once you have all the parts together, it's time to start preparing them for riveting. Now the first thing I'm gonna to do to get my parts ready is to feel all of the holes in the parts. A lot of these holes do not need to bird, in my opinion, they're really smooth, but every once in a while you'll find a hole with a burr on it, and that should be removed. You can do that with a tool like this, and you just put it in the hole like that, give it about a one turn spin, and you'll take the burr right off. After I check the holes, the next thing I'm gonna do is check the edges for any burrs along the edges. And most of them are very nice, but again, just like the holes, every once in a while you'll feel a little kind of burr or something on the edge of the hole. If you, if you do, I just take a piece of 400 sandpaper, 320 will work also. And you could just go over the corner a few times like that, and you'll have a nice, perfectly smooth edge. Now I wanted to show you these two big thick brackets here for the horizontal stabilizer. When they come from the factory, or when they're cut out of the machines, you can see the, the rough edge that it leaves on there. If you can't see it well in the camera here, I'll put a picture on the screen. And then you can see after I've polished it up, how perfectly smooth that edge is all the way around. 
And I really think you should smooth these out. And there are two different ways that you can do that. The first way is to just use a file, especially for the deep grooves that are in there. A file works really nice to level it off. You can completely finish it with a file or you can get it mostly good with a file and then move over to a Scotch-Brite wheel. You can use a powered Scotch-Brite wheel to perfectly smooth the edges. This wheel happens to work really, really nice. They are expensive though. I think this wheel was about $70. I am so excited because there's only one more step we have to do before we start building. And I am going to tell you, this is the most fun part of building an airplane. It's, it's so much fun. L let me show you what it is. Now, the most fun part of building an airplane is removing these labels. Oh, I love this part. Now, the reason this is so much fun is we get to play with chemicals that can almost kill you. And then we get to soak these stickers in chemicals. Oh, look how much fun this is. It's glued on there. So we have to soften that glue with MEK or lacquer thinner or some other poisonous substance. If you get it soaked good enough, you might be able to peel it off. Oh, look at that, it came off in one piece. You'll still have some glue on there you'll want to wipe off with your poisonous chemicals. Now, this part is ready to go. All right, the million dollar question. Should I prime my parts? That's what everybody wants to know. That's a decision that you have to make. I can't tell you yes or no because everybody you talk to is going to give you a different opinion. Generally, the theory is if you live in, a, in the Midwest or a drier climate, you don't need to prime your parts because the aluminum that these airplanes is made out of is already resistant to corrosion. If you live on one of the coasts where the air is kind of salty and corrosive, it's generally recommended that you prime your parts just for some extra protection. I chose to prime mine because I don't, just don't ever want it in the back of my head that I wish I would have primed because in the future, I don't know where I'm going to be living. I might be in Florida or I might be on one of the coasts. And if I am in one of those climates, I just want to know that my airplane is fully uh, taken care of with the primer. But keep in mind, most Cessnas and Pipers and the Mooney that I had that was built 10 years before I was born, was, or those airplanes were never primed on the inside and most of them don't have any corrosion. Some of them do. My Mooney was 10 years older than me and it had no corrosion on it. So the decision is yours. Now, one of the things I like to do before I get started just grabbing parts and click them together is I like to read through each of the steps in the manual. And there's, you can see there's quite a few pages, I don't know, maybe like six or eight pages total for the horizontal stabilizer. But I like to see what order they're doing things. I like to look at all the pictures to get an idea of what's going on. And I also like to look through the plans just to see how all the parts go together. It just gives me an overall view of what I will be doing to build this horizontal stabilizer. Well, we are officially building a Zenith Super Duty. One of the first steps is to Clico on the spar doublers to the front and rear spar. And that's what I'm doing here. After I accomplish each step in the manual, I put a little check mark in the box to indicate that it is done. These angles get clecoed and riveted to the end of the spar, but take your time in doing this because they do go on a specific way. It's not hard to figure out which way they go, but just make sure you don't put them on backwards. You'll see here that when I went to rivet these, this pneumatic rivet squeezer or puller is too big and couldn't fit over the rivet because it was hitting the bracket. So I used the manual one and you can see I ground down previously the sides of this squeezer, which makes it thinner and able to fit nicely up against these kind of uh, angle brackets.
The horizontal stabilizer has two spars. It has a forward and a aft spar. This is now the forward spar I'm working on. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just clicoing on these spar doublers. Now, of course, it's always fun when you can start squeezing rivets. With all the spar doubler rivets put in place, I usually start from the center and work my way outward to both edges. And when I'm done, I just look it over to make sure everything looks good. This spar looks perfect. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end the video here. I am getting tired. I've been out in the workshop all day and sometimes you just have to know when to quit. I'd like to do a little bit more, but when you work when you're tired, that's a good way to make mistakes. As you can see, I have the entire horizontal stabilizer Clico together. I think it is ready to rivet, but again, I'm gonna stop here for the day and rivet it another day. In episode three of the Super Duty build, I think we can get the horizontal stabilizer completely finished up with the skins riveted on. And after that, it's time to move on to the elevators. Stick around for more videos. Thanks for watching, subscribe, give a thumbs up, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you again on episode three.